Hello everyone, my name is Mark Freeman. I'm the faculty graduate tutor at the UCL Institute of Education. And in this presentation, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to postgraduate study and the Centre for Doctoral Education where I work. You'll be hearing from me in very general terms and then uh, some of the programme leaders will introduce their own particular programmes in much more detail. In case uh, I forget to mention it later, uh, in March 2020, it was announced that the UCL Institute of Education was once again uh, number one in the world for education in the QS World University rankings. Um, so just in case I forget to make that, that point later on, something we're, <clears throat> we're fond of um, emphasising, of course, in our faculty. That is now seven years in a row that we have occupied the top position in the QS World University rankings. University College London, this is where we are. This is our famous portico. Um, University College London is one of the oldest uh, and most venerable institutions of higher learning in the United Kingdom. We were founded in 1826 um, and we occupy a, a real prime site in central London, in, <clears throat> in the Bloomsbury area. We were ranked eighth in the QS World University rankings, uh, 2020, that should say, not 2010. Um, apologies for the error there. Um, and I would also mention, of course, that for education, in case I haven't said this, uh, we are in fact number one. It's a big university. We have 42,000 students from more than 150 countries. And uh, <clears throat> at the last count that I have access to, we had 5,748 doctoral research students. We have a very large doctoral research community, which is one of the many attractions of UCL and of course that's just UCL not to mention the other universities uh, that are located close to us and and elsewhere in in London. Many many highlights of UCL I've picked out some out here I'm a historian so I often focus on the um, historical dimensions of, of, of the university and um, there is uh, a revised version of a history of the university called the world of UCL by Nezhli Hart, John North, and most recently revised by Georgina Brewis, my colleague at, at, uh, in the IOE. Uh, this is available um, <clears throat> free of charge as an open access download from, from UCL Press. And I do encourage anyone who is thinking of coming to, to UCL to have a read of this, um, of this interesting, varied history. UCL Library Services are one of the, the jewels in our crown. We have 17 libraries and learning spaces uh, across the university, including something I'll come on to later, the Newsom Library in the Institute of Education. The UCL Doctoral School represents that, that community of almost um, 6,000 doctoral students, as I've said, and looks after their interests. It is a university-wide community with um, its own training program known as Doc Skills, which offers all sorts of of training from, um, <clears throat> from research methods to um, career development and so on and so forth. And we also, as I'll come on to say, have our own faculty training program too. And UCL Press, who published The World of UCL, which is pictured on, on this slide, is in fact um, the UK's first fully open access university press. It's a real feature of the university. Um, we have this open access press and it publishes, among other things, the London Review of Education, which is the IOE's own flagship journal. We have 11 faculties in, in UCL um, and some of our doctoral students do span different faculties. We do have supervisory partnerships with colleagues in some of the other faculties. Um, so we are one of 11 and I've, um, <clears throat> I've emboldened us on on this slide here. That's the landscape within which we sit. UCL Institute of Education, of course, we have not always been a faculty of UCL. We were founded in 1902 as the London Day Training College. I put on this slide the cover of a centenary history, which is itself almost 20 years old now by Richard Aldrich. Um, this is being updated and will shortly be re-released in an updated edition <clears throat> again by by UCL Press. So we were founded a long time ago. We now have more than 8,000 students at all the various levels, postgraduate research, taught, 
initial teacher education and undergraduate and more than 800 members of staff and we are I think the UK's premier institution for um, the education and the training of teachers indeed the the world's premier education uh, institution for the for education according to the QS world rankings for 2020 which I may or may not have, have men mentioned already um, we became a faculty of UCL in 2014 which really did inaugurate a new era for the Institute of Education and brought many new opportunities uh, for us. Ah, yes, I, I've mentioned this, haven't I? World number one for education. Uh, we have six departments in the Institute of Education and all of our research students, all of our doctoral students um, are members of uh, are members of one of the departments. Uh, culture, communication and media, curriculum, pedagogy and assessment, EPS, education, practice and society, the Department of Learning and Leadership, DLL, psychology and human development, um, perhaps somewhat confusingly going by the um, initials PhD, um, social science, Department of Social Science, DSS, and up to, uh, more than 30 research centres which focus on particular topics in educational research and have their own activities. Some of them sit within departments, some of them are cross-departmental, some are even cross-faculty. Um, just to take one example, I'm a member of the, uh, as I'm, I'm a historian of education, I'm a member of the um, International Centre for Historical Research in Education, um, which is one of the, the 30 research centres, and we have a, a varied and I hope interesting programme of seminars and conferences focusing on the history of education in, in this country and um, internationally. Some highlights, there are many, um, many highlights. Um, we lead, for example, the um, UBEL Doctoral Training Partnership, UCL Birkbeck in East London, which is the ESRC Economic and Social Research Council Doctoral Training Partnership, which offers scholarships for doctoral research. The director of the DTP is Lee Wei, and you'll be able to hear more from him on research funding in a different one of these videos. As with UCL more widely, we have um, a world recognized library and archives, the NewSAM library and archives pictured here on this slide, which is one of the largest collections you could imagine of education related material, books, journals, uh, archival resources, special collections and, and much more. <clears throat> the IOE has an extensive program through its departments and its large number of research centres that I've mentioned of seminars and other events. You really could go to a seminar pretty much every night and a conference pretty much every week if you had time to do that in, in our faculty. We also um, <clears throat> have an academic writing centre which uh, exists as the name suggests to support academic writing. It offers one-to-one -one support for students at all levels from undergraduate to doctoral with academic writing and it runs courses and also writing retreats for students and staff at the IOE. We have a new student bar which you can find on on level four of the building and hopefully will reopen in due course once once we can access the building again and Finally, on this slide, and what I'm going to move on to discuss now is the Centre for Doctoral Education here at the Institute of Education. So this is the IOE Centre for Doctoral Education. We run our faculty research training programme, which is a huge programme um, of between 70 and 100 courses um, on research methods, again, career development, various aspects of the doctoral process. Um, we have a strong research training program with both face-to-face -face and online provision um, for our, our doctoral students, who are also, I, I, I should say, um, permitted to, of course, take the um, university research training courses, as well as take advantage of other research training opportunities that the Centre for Doctoral Education provides, as well as monitoring the progress uh, of um, doctoral students and developing a programme of research into doctoral education itself. We also host a number of showpiece summer events. The Summer Conference, which 
This year will be taking place online, usually takes place face to face, but is also streamed online. A poster conference, which you can see pictured here, where uh, the research posters of our doctoral students and others are, are showcased, and an annual graduate seminar, which um, gives our students the opportunity to hear from recent graduates and to learn about the process of, of doing doctoral research. So the Centre for Doctoral Education exists to try to build a community among all of the doctoral students in the Institute of Education in our faculty and one of the ways we do that is through a programme of, of annual events. So we have four uh, <clears throat> research degrees or three or four research degrees depending on how you want to count them um, and you'll hear more about these from the individual programme leaders in their videos so I won't say very much about it. <clears throat> the MPhil PhD programme, the Doctor of Philosophy programme is the best known uh, research degree program and the largest by some way in our faculty and at most universities. Um, we have um, a face-to-face -face and an online version um, and these are three-year full-time or five-year part-time research programs in which you complete um, as the main uh, output of your study uh, a thesis of up to a hundred thousand words. Uh, on which you are then examined. <clears throat> the EDD, the Doctor of Education, is a part-time professional doctorate taught by, uh, uh, work, uh, taken by those who work in education, often but by no means only uh, teachers. Um, it has taught phase and a research phase. It, in total, it may last four or five years or more. Uh, Sue Taylor, the uh, programme leader, will say more about this. But again, th this culminates in, in a a fairly long thesis, 45,000 words maximum, um, and therefore is ultimately a, a research doctorate, just like the, the PhD, but it does have, have taught phases in it. The DED Sci, which we won't say much about at this event, the Doctor of Educational Psychology is a part-time, a full-time, I should say, again, apologies for the error there, full-time professional doctorate, which is undertaken um, <clears throat> over three years. Um, you can find out more about that for, um, elsewhere. We won't be focusing on, on that here. But we're focusing <clears throat> on, on, on the PhD and the EDD programmes at, at this event. We have two taught programmes in the Centre for Doctoral Education, which uh, in some ways uh, feed into our doctoral research programmes. The, the MRES in Educational and Social Research, led by Olga Kara, and the PG DIP in social science research methods led by Joe Mintz. This um, in particular um, is an entry qualification for our um, MPhil PhD programmes. Um, we normally require a master's degree, but one can also enter the MPhil PhD programme with the PG DIP in social science research methods. Uh, and this programme also allows advanced entry onto the EDD. So, you can skip a part of the taught phase of the EDD if you've done the, the PG dip in social science research methods. You'll hear more about both of these programmes in the, the individual uh, programme leaders' presentations. Just to finish off, a couple of things I'd like to, to end on. I've <clears throat> talked about University College London and about our faculty, the IOE. Um, it's worth emphasising also that we're part of the University of London. We're one of the 17 constituent colleges of the University of London, um, which has, as this slide shows, 135,000 students or more, plus around 50,000 on international programmes across the world. The picture on the slide is Senate House, uh, built in the 1930s as the headquarters of the University of London. Uh, it still functions as such, and also houses Senate House Library, which is one of the many libraries uh, beyond UCL but close by that you can use as a member of the university. This is a very important part I think of the research environment that we enjoy being part of in Bloomsbury. The University of London student hub called Student Central on Mallet Street just opposite the uh, Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts is another place which um, exists to support students. It has bars, catering, um, a printing shop and, and so on and so forth. There are many facilities for students, not just in 
University College London itself, but, but also uh, in the University of London more widely. Uh, we also are very close to the British Library, which is the main UK copyright library. It's not a lending library, um, but it does take a copy of every book published in the United Kingdom and um, many other books published overseas besides. Uh, membership is free. You just need to take, take your ID and it's a good place to work. Many of our students enjoy working at the British Library. I enjoy working there myself. It's very extensive reading rooms um, are, are um, a real treasure trove for, for research. So we're not just part of UCL, we're part of central London and I can't emphasize enough really the, um, the benefits that we enjoy from this. It really is uh, unrivaled and the British Library is just one example of many resources that you can access as a doctoral or master's or, or PG DIP student at um, University College London. <laughs> so I'm going to end there um, and just in case I hadn't mentioned it I thought I'd, I just ought to squeeze this slide in. Um, the Institute of Education world, world number one for education uh, for seven years now in, in a row. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Do please listen to the other presentations and we very much look forward to hearing your questions uh, when we, when we uh, run the online event in due course. Thank you very much indeed.